It's time for round 7 of the 2003 GP 4.1 Championship. And we're here at Silverstone for, yeah, round 7. Uh, Etienne Jones is our championship leader at the moment on 28 points. Sean Southern is in second place at the moment. So we're still very, very close to the top. Even six races in, uh, our championship leader only has 28 points. And as we approach halfway in the season now, only two races to go, you know, it could go anyway. Anyone could win this one. So, let's see the grid for today at Silverstone. Etienne Jones, the home hero on pole position. He's been the fastest driver so far this year for sure. Um, Sean Sutherland in second place. Miguel Alvaro hasn't scored since round one has qualified in third place with Alex Loldermex, who's also not been on the receiving end of much good luck so far this year. Uh, also hasn't scored since Australia, but he will qualify fourth. Shane Odiemi qualifies fifth with Kingsley Kamisoto in sixth, straight after his first win. Con Skywalker in seventh place, another good qualifying from him, with Leo Goria in eighth. The two Toyotas in the fifth row, with Andres de Jesus 11th and Daniel Duarte 12th after his podium. Uh, last race um, at the last race, uh, Ronan McAndrew in P13, Ben Jones 14th place, David Panama is 15th with Leighton de Choutonier at 16th, so both terrible qualifyings there for the McLaren Ferrari drivers, they will be hoping to make some positions up in the race. Jordi Alvarez P17, Jay Hamill P18, Tommy Toff all the way down in P19, I don't know what's up with that, he got very unlucky last race though. Uh, retiring from P3 with an engine issue, and John O'Sullivan rounds out the top 20 with both arrows on the back row as usual. That's another dry race. I don't know when we're going to get a wet race. Honestly, G4 does normally give you a lot more wet races than this, but it happens, I guess. So. We're ready, we're on the grid, and it's here in Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. And it's five lights. And we're off for the British Grand Prix, who will get the better start. Looks like Etienne Jones is already clear through into the lead. Miguel Mavera side by side with Sean Sutherland through the first corner. But it looks like Sean Southern will just about get ahead of him there. Through Magnus and Beckett's. Yeah, Miguel Rivera gets out in front. Loldermex keeps P4. Kamisoto up to 5th place. Leo Goris had a great start to P6 uh, with uh, his teammate dropping back a little bit. As now we see Miguel Rivera possibly trying something on the Ferrari. Up the inside, maybe into Stone. No. But who will do that is Kingsley Kamisoto, who tries it up the inside of. Um, Alex Loldermex, but he won't do it. In fact, he'll have to watch out for uh, the Renault of Leo Goria not running any tobacco sponsorship, so he's looking quite bare here. Also, Constar will go try something there, but stays P8 for now. And now we see Constar will possibly trying to move into Abbey, not going to work out, but Torres is also getting very close to the there. So far, our race leader, Etienne Jones. The home crowd will be loving that. No crashes though through all of the first lap, which is something unusual at least. Not even any damage for any of the drones. But Sean Southern isn't going to be letting Etienne Jones stay in front of him for too long. Maybe be trying to move into turn one. Side by side they go. Etienne Jones will just stay ahead for the time being, and Miguel Rivera actually is right with these two at the front. Could he finally get a good result today? Or will his bad luck continue? We'll have to see. Sometimes Rysik also fights off Daniel Duarte to keep his spot in the top 10 for now. And now still P14 as well. And now we watch Sean Sutherland try to make a move into Stowe. Can he do it this lap? He does. He makes the move. He takes the lead of the British Grand Prix. And Etienne Jones is going to have to look behind in his mirrors from Miguel Marrero. And Alex Loldermex also has caught the two Williams. Etienne Jones has sent... Well, even Sean Sutherland has sent himself into the lead. I don't know whether this counts as his home race or not, but... 
Don't ask me, I'm not Scottish. Um, Con Skywalker there defending from Simon Nathaniel. He's not seeming too quick so far this race. Already a bit of a gap between him and Shane Odiemi. It's now Sean Sutherland leads the race by half a second from Etienne Jones, who is not far ahead at all of Miguel Marrero. Could even see the two teammates fighting it out within a lap or two. We see also Shane Odiemi trying to make a move on King Z, Kami Soto. He won't get it done, but look who might actually get it done. Simon Nathaniel just won't quite have the power to make the move through turn one on Con Skywalker. But he might actually do that soon. Let's go on board with Miguel Rivera then as he pulls to the inside of the track. Can he get the move done here? Well, Alex Aldermex actually try something. He's right with the two Williams as well. He's not going to make it through Stowe. Can he make it into club maybe? No. They switch lines and Etienne Jones will stay in front for the time being. Neil Goria also catching this little group now. Um, Con Skywalker loses three positions there. So what went there on there for him? So Simon Nathaniel makes the move through Stowe. Con Skywalker just gets a little bit bogged down. But yeah, just um yeah, just a really bad exit there. Gets swamped left and right by Duarte and McLaren Dreisig. And now we watch to see Sean Sutherland already a two second gap on Etienne Jones after not that long in front of him. Leighton De Schutten and David Pano still both struggling, not even able to keep up with Andres De Jesus in the Renault car, so something's going on with them. And Tommy Toff in this little back marker group of cars, that's not where he wants to find himself right now. Considering Jaguar a second in the constructors as we speak. And that's Etienne Jones, that's Etienne Jones off the track, what's happened there? He's kept it going, but... That's put Alex Lauder makes in a podium position. We'll have to see. Just quite... I think that's just driver error. But he was lucky that he kept it off the gravel, else that would, could have been the end of his race. Like we saw in the old sim in 2008, when he was leading and he just went onto the gravel there and his wheels came off completely. Uh, I think that's another incident at turn one. Con Skywalker completely out the race. Is that the same thing as what happened to Etienne? I think it is. See, this is what could have happened to Etienne. It happened to Con Skywalker instead. Let's go on board with him. Just gets a bit wayward on the last bit of that straight. Not good timing for Con Skywalker there. And he is in the wall, out of this race. Not that he was running in the points anyway, but he won't be happy with that one. Now we have to watch um, Leo Goria almost in front of Alex Aldermix. But look at these midfield cars keeping pace with Miguel Marvero. So his P2 definitely isn't set in stone for the time being. And meanwhile behind we have Kingsley Kamisoto. I don't know quite what happened to him. Oh he's got a throttle problem. Because he was running a couple of positions higher. I think P6 a second ago. And now he's just got problems here. Did I see some gravel being kicked up in the background as well? Or did I imagine that? I'm not really sure. No, no, no. It wasn't gravel. It's smoke from the car of John O'Sullivan. So a water leak for him as well. It's unfortunate for the British driver. Two British drivers having reliability problems at the British Grand Prix. That's not what he wants to be doing. And also Etienne Jones going off the track and going down to P5. Not a great lap for British drivers, that one. So now we see Miguel Rivero five seconds back from Sean Sullivan. What a race Sean Sullivan has been having. There's John Sullivan still parking it up meanwhile. Yeah, five seconds back and under threat from Alex Loldermex, who's having a brilliant race in that Salva. So, 
you know, we could be... Could be seeing some... Good moves from the midfield drivers. Almost lost my words there. Let's see then. Whatever happens, if it finishes like this, this could not really go much better for Sean Sutherland. He'll gain 7 points on his main title rival Etienne Jones at the top of the championship. And, um, in fact, he'll regain the championship lead. But, as I say that, he gets caught right behind the two arrows. That has decimated his lead to Miguel Marrero. And... But Alex Laldemex is right with the Portuguese driver. In fact, he might even make a move here. Miguel Marrero gets boxed in behind that arrows. Alex Laldemex will take P2 here at the British Grand Prix. Leo Goria will have to wait, and so will Etienne Jones, to make it past the arrows. In fact, Miguel, Etienne Jones makes slight contact. He was lucky not to take any damage there from the rear of uh, Brandon Liu. Um, and now we, we see this whole group of cars, just a complete mess of cars. With Aaron Dreissig now out the points, well, what happened here then? So it's the two toys have been caught behind. Arrows. Santanio gets through okay, but opportunistic Daniel Duarte just gets through there. And now late in the shooting here, he's finally starting to make his way through the field. He tries to make a move on Ben Jones and won't get through. And now We'll see what happens. And there's contact there. There's contact late into shooting. It will lose his front wing on the back of that arrows. Two podiums on the trot, but it doesn't look like he'll be a third one. As he just drives straight into the back of Brandon Lee. Clumsy there from late into shooting. It as Andres De Jesus is handed a P11 for free. And so David Panner also. He's also boxed in as well, he's losing some time there, might have to watch out for Ronan McAndrew on the inside, it's like watching F1 in slow motion here. But they finally all make it through. Tommy Toth also in P15, now Pano up with wing damage. So, where did this happen? This happened earlier on. That's why he was going so slowly. Oh, just through Beckett's, he just also rear-ended Michael Clark. So, not that these two were running too high anyway, but that's just lost them any chance of points at all. As there's a big crash there with Daniel Duarte, his car's split in half. I'm not quite sure what happened there, there's smoke coming out the back of his car. And he just decides to park it in the weirdest place possible, in a concrete wall. That is quite a dangerous way to pull over, it literally just goes onto the grass and <laughs> size a concrete wall is the best place to bin it. Whatever floats your boat. Let's look then, Miguel Rivero is catching back up now to Alex Loldermex. He wants that second place back, he's not going to give it up without a fight. Etienne Jones though, his teammate is dropping back from Leo Goria, not blistering pace today from our pole sitter. The two Toyotas is rounding out the points but maybe not for long. Ben Jones up by McLaren Dreisig. No, not this time. As that goes late and into the pits, that promotes Tommy Toth to P12. But yeah, let's take a look now at this battle. Miguel Rivero squeezed the outside of the track there. Aggressive defending from Alex Aldermex but completely legal. These two were the ones who made contact, remember, on the second to last lap of the race in Australia, which lost Alex Loldermex that podium that he would have got in his rookie, uh, his debut race even. Miguel Rivera was able to carry on and take that podium place, despite spinning. 
Alex Aldermix will not be hoping for a repeat of that, that's for sure. So yeah, we'll just have to see what goes on here. Because these two drivers do have history. Let's see, and we see the arrows double stacking in the pits. Strategic masterclass once again. As we see Miguel on Ferro trying to get into that slipstream, not close enough to do anything into turn one. And I think it's the same story for that battle for P8. Sean Southern now out in front by six seconds. Make that even. Oh, someone's lost a lot of time there. Leo Gore. Alex Aldermex has lost his front wing. You couldn't make this up. This guy's luck cannot get any worse. He's done exactly the same thing as late in this shooting here. Oh, that is such terrible timing for him. Miguel Rivera will be relieved to get past him, but. Leo Goria, one of the drivers in the season so far, is up into third, threatening Miguel Rivera now, as a Toyota, Simon Nathaniel's lost his rear wing as well, oh absolute carnage from the same arrows as well, and I believe there's also been an incident with Andrew De Jesus. he's lost his front wing somewhere, so he's, he's gone off at turn one, Lost his front wing, just like, well, Con Skywalker got a bit more damaged earlier. And Ronan McAndrew, P11, wants to take that P10, but gets kind of locked in by Andres De Jesus. He just hits straight into the back of him. Andres De Jesus spins around. JK Mill says he'll be taking that one. So does Tommy Toth, who's now about to enter the top 10. Not a bad comeback drive from him. We also see McLaren Dreisig losing a lot of time there. So yeah, Alex Aldermix and Simon Nathaniel, both with damage now, they'll both have to pit. None of this concerns this man though. Sean Southern now with a 10 second lead on Miguel Rivero, with 4 laps to go. Can he avoid those deadly moving chicanes? They are particularly deadly at this track, so... You gotta avoid them. And actually, as I say that, this man, the Jaguar driver, him and his teammate have been very impressive so far this year. And if he can clear this arrows with literally no wings. Um, oh, no, actually, he's been overtaken by Jordi Alvarez and Jay Hamill. Just as I say that, so. Sorry for cursing you there, Tommy. So I was about to say he's going to enter the points, but it looks like Jordi Alvarez who and Jay Hamill, who all, both haven't scored points yet, actually have a chance now of scoring their first points in GP 4.1. Tommy Toth is also in the mix there, fighting for those points. But Miguel Rivero, if it finishes like this, could finally score his first points in six races, which... Well, it would definitely make him happy. He definitely deserves it with the luck he's been having. As we see Tommy Toth now back up to P9 after overtaking Jay Hamill. Up the inside of Stowe. Classic move. Jay Hamill did hang on though, and it he did have to outbreak Jay Hamill into club and take it around the outside. Solid move there from Tommy Toth as he Searches for those points. And Sean Sunders fast approaching the back of that arrows of Brandon Liu. That's going to be kind of concerning for the Ferrari garage to watch right now. There's damage. There's, there's contact there. Sean Sunders has been wiped out the lead of the race. But more importantly, look at this man, Miguel Marrero will inherit the lead of the race now. Etting Jones finds himself back on the podium. Andres De Jesus a lap down behind him. Mm -hmm. 
Sean Sutherland though, that is absolute, absolutely shocking for him as he loses his front wing and he will have to pick, he might still come out in the points but not how he wanted his day to go as Leo Goria now overtakes Miguel Rivera, Miguel Rivera getting stuck behind that arrows and Leo Goria is going to lead this race as we see more yellow flags, it's for Jay Hamill who's running P10 oh he just is that driver error? That is just driver error. He just completely drives off the track at Chapel. Unfortunate for him, really. But look at that. That is basically. On board with Leogoria. That's basically an overtake for the lead here at the British Grand Prix. Helped a lot by Brandon Liu. Miguel Mavero, who's about to take the lead of the race. Not anymore, it's going to be Leo Goria. Who we see Sean Southern going into the pits. Leo Goria is now the race leader of the 2003 British Grand Prix. Miguel Mavero second place, and Ettingers was making a double Williams podium. Well, Andrew De Jesus can only watch as his teammate literally leads the race while he's in 17th. Shane Oliami 4th place, Ben Jones 5th place, McLaren Racing 6th place, Sean Southern will probably come out the pits in 7th, unless Jordi Alvarez will actually take those points away. It's going to be close, they come out the pits close together. He does lose out actually. What about with Tommy Todd? Tommy Todd is... he does slow down, it's going to be side by side into Magnus and Beckett's Tommy Todd has to yield there. He still has a chance to get by, I guess. But look at this battle for the lead. Coming on to the final lap and a half of the race. Miguel Rivero in that very fast Williams against Leo Goria, the underdog in that Renault, who's been having such a good season so far. Just one lap and a few corners extra to go. And we still have this battle for the final point, where I think Shawson on fresher rubber might just have it sealed. And Alex Loldermex, he's been very unlucky today. Again. You couldn't make it up for him, seriously. Still in P10. But here's the important battle. P1 in the British Grand Prix. On the final lap of the race, Miguel is going to have a look into Magnus and Beckett. That's not an overtaking place, Miguel. He's so, so close, but is he close enough to get in that slipstream even? I don't think on this lap... He's running out of time here, is Miguel Marvero. On board with him, Leo Gori goes very defensive into club. There's no move... Well, there's Brandon Liu, who's a couple of corners ahead, but I'm not sure that will interfere with this. We'll take a look, Miguel Rivero is getting so close, but just not close enough. Goria going defensive once again. Um, meanwhile, Sean Sutherland now up to P7 after this move on Jordi Alvarez, so he's making progress up the field. But that's, that's not what we're looking for today. We will watch as they enter the final few corners of the race. They're both battling for their first win here. Leo Gori is most definitely the underdog here. As they come out of the final corner, surely it is going to be Leo Goria who wins the British Grand Prix. Unbelievable stuff. It's going to be close up to the line actually, but he does take it by one tenth of a second. An amazing race between those two. Etienne Jones will take the home podium. Shane Odiemi, 4th place, Ben Jones in 5th, his 2nd points of the season after his podium in Indi Indonesia, McLaren Dreisig, P6, Sean Southern will take 7th in the end, it could have been a win. <laughs> there goes his engine actually, right at the end, will he even keep P7? He will, he will just about keep P7 as his engine, let's go, in fact he completely quits at turn 1. Tommy Toth then just missing out on points. He did all he could, only P9 for him though. 
Nathan Dishoot near P10, Alex Lodomex could have been second place, but it turned out to be 11th. And the two McLarens battling out for 13th place across the line. Uh, that's This is not where they want to be, especially not the team's home race, that's for sure. Anyway, let's quickly look at the results of the race. Just one tenth in it between the top two. Definitely another good race. I'm sorry, Alex. I swear, I'm not rigging it against you. And the fastest lap was set by Sean Sutherland after coming out of the pits. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you at the next race.